Welcome back astronauts. In today's video, I've got a lot of star-filled news for you all, including the brand new star-filled timeline that was just released by Bethesda, and this reveals all kinds of new details, including new story details and more details on the factions and lore of the game. And then we also have new evidence that suggests that NPCs may be able to actually board your ship randomly. And then Bethesda responds about the Fallout 4 next gen update. And I'm also going to go over your top comments from around the interwebs and from previous videos. So let's dive into the news astronauts. Here we go. All right, so let's first start off with that timeline that was just released by Bethesda recently, and this goes over the story so far in Starfield. We've got a bunch of new details in here. I'm going to start off with the very beginning of the timeline and go in chronological order for you all. So we're going to start off with 2050, where it says humans first arrive on Mars, and by 2100, humans are living in space. And I think this timeline is actually quite accurate uh, compared to what SpaceX and NASA actually want to achieve in real life. Now, uh, in 2156, it says humans arrive in Alpha Centauri 4.37 light years away from Earth. And in 2159, the United Colonies are established. So that is when the UC is officially established. And then one year later, it says New Atlantis is founded and becomes the official capital city of the United Colonies in 2161. And of course, we cannot forget that New Atlantis is literally the biggest city that Bethesda has ever created. Now, moving on, it says 2188 co-invites Volley to join Cheyenne in a new alliance the Free Star Collective. The Free Star Collective is officially formed in 2189. And then in 2194, it goes on to say the United Colonies positions the star station called the Clinic in orbit around Depala in the Narion system. The unaffiliated peoples of the Narion system see this as a UC attempt to expand their borders and demand the UC remove the clinic. When the UC refuses, the people of Narion vote to join the Freestar Collective who mobilize to protect the system in 2195. So a lot of drama happening in 2194. And then a couple of years later, in 2196, it says in response to Freestar mobilization, the UC moves a fleet into the Narion system and Freestar responds in kind. The Narion War Begin. So things are really heating up here. And then we go on to 2216, where it says the Narion War drags on as public sentiment sours. Finally, the Treaty of Narion is signed by the UC and Freestar Collective in 2216, ending the conflict. The term settled systems is formalized in the treaty. So we get that term that settlement systems is established in 2216 as a result of these Narion wars that have been going on. And then in 2221, it says the Freestar Rangers are founded as an elite protective and investigative force dedicated to serving all citizens of the Freestar Collective. And then in 2275, it says Constellation is formed by Sebastian Banks. And then they go on to list all of the original members as well, which include a uh, physicist, a uh, botanist, uh, you know, specialist, and so on and so forth. So that happens in 2275. Next up is 2305. Barrett joins Constellation. And then a couple years later, 2307, it says the Freestar Collective begins farming on the planet of Vesta in the Lunara system. By 2308, the United Colonies claims that by establishing a colony in a fourth star system, the Freestar Collective has violated the Treaty of Narion. Diplomatic talks break down and the UC lay siege to Vesta, killing anyone who stayed behind or was brought in to defend it. The colony war officially begins. So it's 2307 
when the colony war begins. And then a couple years later in 2310, it says Constellation comes into possession of their first artifact and tucks it away in the Constellation archive. So why did they tuck it away so quickly? That is the big question. Now, it then goes on to say, in 2311, after several years of conflict, the colony war effectively comes to an end with the Battle of Cheyenne as a flotilla of civilian and military Freestar Collective ships takes down the major ships of the UC Navy using hit-and-run tactics. And then four years later, in 2315, it says the UC Vanguard is founded as a part of a UC response to the Free Star Collective's use of civilian ships during the Colony War. The Vanguard is the UC's own civilian navy, relying on civilians using their own ships who pledged to protect the United Colonies and its interests. The ultimate reward for this service citizenship in the united colonies so we got a lot of stuff going on there as well and then of course in 2319 it says sarah morgan becomes the youngest head of the uc navigator corps though it's a short-lived position as the division is shut down in 2320 cast adrift but still eager to put her training to good use Morgan joins Constellation. And then in 2321, Walter Stround, co-owner of Stround Eklund, one of the Settled System's premier starship manufacturers, joins Constellation and becomes its primary financial backer. And then just one year later, it says former Crimson Fleet pirate Vladimir Saul joins Constellation. So a lot of stuff happening with Constellation during this time. And then we go on to 2325. It says Sarah Morgan becomes acting chair of Constellation. And then also uh, theologian Matteo Catri joins Constellation. And then one year later in 2326, Barrett finds the original artifact in the Constellation archives and knows it must be special. So again, here we are again at the archives and the artifact and you know the question is why did they put the artifact in the archives to begin with that's a huge question and then also in 2326 after months of correspondence with sarah morgan graduate student and gifted scientist noel is invited to join constellation and then finally the timeline ends with these events it says 2327 freestar ranger sam co and his daughter cora join Constellation, and then in 2328, Andrea joins Constellation, and then in 2328 as well, Barrett convinces Constellation to purchase Star Station L868 and modify it to become a deep space scanner nicknamed The Eye. And of course, uh, this was posted on Reddit by user Lord Nyrox, who pointed out, so this must be The Eye right here so we now know the name of this uh star station right here so a lot of stuff to dissect there in the timeline you know we have a lot of events going on and a lot of knowledge and lore as we go into starfield and its launch in september so hit that like button if you are super excited especially now that we know all of the timeline events of starfield now i also want to talk about this that was posted by makalu kiki on reddit who said npcs boarding your ship already hinted at and they posted a screenshot uh, which was taken from the todd howard q a from last year and you can see there that there's three different dialogue options that are presented to you uh, that you can say to this individual and this individual appears to be boarding your ship randomly because if you look at that first dialogue option it says you can persuade and then you say there's no treasure in my ship cut your losses before more people get hurt so it's kind of indicating that you're telling this individual to get off your ship you know uh, and cut your losses before anyone gets hurt so to me i would have to agree that this does kind of hint at the possibility of NPCs randomly boarding your ship. And this was also posted by uh, Tech Help Nav, who said, I have a strong feeling that 
this will be a feature because in the direct when it showed a located crew members it also had a security bot in the ship staff list and the whole ftl like system they have makes me think that being boarded will be happening if they disable your engines slash grab drive and dock you guess we'll see in a couple of weeks though so yeah i guess we'll find out in a couple of weeks and also this was posted by ign it says microsoft has confirmed its xbox plans for gamescom 2023 which of course is coming up later this month in august it says and that starfield is not playable for the public now Naturally, of course, this raised some concerns from the community. Uh, there were other content creators that made a really big deal out of this and blew this out of proportion. Uh, and what I have to say about this is that keep in mind that previous Bethesda games have never really been a playable demo at any of the conventions. So this is actually completely normal and nothing to be alarmed about. So you know, in my opinion, this is nothing to worry about. Now, uh, this was posted on Reddit by Sleepcom, who said NPCs have patches that show what skills they have. And they pointed out that it appears that NPCs will be possibly displaying patches that will show the different skills that they may have. So I hope this is a feature, of course. And I believe that, uh, you know, players will be able to put patches on their own suits to show their different skills as well. Now, also, Bethesda responded about the Fallout 4 next-gen update that they've been working on, and this was posted on Twitter by Darren Flynn, who asked, Hey, DC Deacon, any news on Fallout 4 next-gen update? Has been awfully quiet for quite some time now, with nothing shared with the community. And then Pete Hines from Bethesda responded and said, Don't know if you've heard but we are shipping a new game in three weeks of course he's referring to starfield he says bit of a priority when we have an update we will share it so that's the official response on that now it's time to go over your top comments starting off with this one from grand master cyber ninja 9140 gosh it's a long name who says to be completely honest i really hope we can build our ships big enough to store smaller ships, if not at launch, maybe in a near future DLC. Yes, I 100% want to see this. That would be freaking awesome to see. And this is from Buttery Goodness NC, who says, Would love Warhammer mods. I know some are in Fallout 4, but Starfield fits 40k better. And totally agree. I think, uh, well, actually, I think Warhammer uh, mods would fit. Uh, Fallout 4 and that they did fit Fallout 4 quite well, but Starfield with its futuristic sci-fi setting, of course, I totally understand what you're saying that Warhammer is going to fit even better with Starfield. So I'm guessing that people are already planning on Warhammer mods, especially uh, with the Henry Cavill uh, series or movie that's going to be in the works for Warhammer. So Warhammer is just going to get more and more popular. And uh, yeah, we can definitely anticipate some amazing Warhammer mods in the future from the community for sure. And then uh, this is from Bobo Boogans2511, who says, looking forward to making the Millennium Falcon. Yes, Star Wars ships uh, created in Starfield are going to be an extremely popular part of the game. So let me know if you are going to be creating a Star Wars type ship in Starfield and which ship you are going to be creating. I definitely want to try to create the Millennium Falcon, but I also want to uh, create the Razor Crest as well. I love the Razor Crest from the Mandalorian. And then also, it'd be cool to create maybe a smaller fighter type ship like an X-Wing or a TIE Fighter or something like that as well. And then in the future, if they ever, you know, give us the ability to create a massive type ship, imagine creating a Star Destroyer or, you know, something like a Blockade Runner. So, gosh, there's so many possibilities with creating Star Wars ships in Starfield. So let me know again, what are you going to be creating? But that's going to do it for the video, astronauts. I'll be back again with more Starfield news. Remember, tomorrow is the official Starfield Discord Q&A. Hopefully we get some goodies from that as well. So I'll be paying attention to that. 
So keep it right here at the channel. If you are new, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you all later astronauts. Take care and take it easy.